everyone, Jen here with Art by Marlene's promo team. I wanted to do a pencil holder or paintbrush holder for you today, so thus this can. Now this can is a 796 ml can and it did have a label. I've removed the label, I measured the label, and this particular label happens to be about 14 inches long by four and three eighths wide. So then I cut a piece of paper out for that label so that I can start decorating with that. The other thing I did was um, cans can be very, very sharp once they've been opened with a can opener. So there was a little spot here that was kind of sticking up. So I just gently pinched it down with a pair of needle nose pliers to make sure that it didn't stick out too badly while I was working on it. The other thing I did is I gave this a thorough wash so that it would not um, still have diced tomatoes in it. So now I'm ready to continue with the holder. And the reason I got this idea was when my kids were growing up for Father's Day or Mother's Day, they used to make things like this. One year it was done with um, popsicle sticks and another year it was done with the construction paper. So the first thing I want to do is I want to take the Art by Marlene uh, collage paper and this one happens to be CPBM06 and I wanted to choose a paper. Uh, so I decided that I was going to go with a fairly colorful paper. So I have this paper here and I trimmed it down to size. Now, of course, the collage paper isn't quite um, the size I need it to be because this is a bit longer. So what I've done is I've taken the one piece and it's ready to be glued down. And then I have a second piece here. And if I take a look at it, I think that what I maybe would like to do is put it somewhere about there and glue it down. It's not going to matter the join up. You won't see it by the time I'm finished decorating and everything, but just to sort of have it in the same pattern. So now I will glue it down with a glue stick and I will continue with thoughts on what to decorate it with. So now I glue, I glued down the collage paper and you'll see that that's where uh, the join up is. You're not really going to see it very much. I'm going to take it and I'm going to put it around the can just to dry fit it to make sure we're okay. And what I will do is I will overlap this spot here. So see, you've got a line here and a line there, but at the end of it, it's at the back of the can, first of all. And second of all, you probably won't see it because I'll, I'll put something there that ties it all in. So now I know, yes, it actually does fit. The only other thing I'm going to do is I'd like to know right here where it joins up. So I'm gonna put a little pencil mark there and there, just so I know I don't have to bother decorating that spot. Now I'll take the tin out of my way. I'll just flatten this out again a little bit because of course bending it around the can made it poof up a bit, but not the end of the world. So now I think what I'm going to do is I am going to use this one for art supplies. So I'm going to take this collage paper, which is, er, gosh, sorry, die cuts of Marlene's, which I absolutely love this series. And I'm going to go with the art supply one. And I'm also going to go with the beach artist one. So I'm going to pop those out which I've kind of already done ahead of, a, ahead of time. And I have what I'm going to use sort of laid out here. So my next process would be just to see what I think it looks like on this paper. So this of course is larger than the paper, but I'm not really worried about that. I can in fact, um, huh, well, I'm thinking about it. I could do this and turn this around, and that's where my join up is. And you would never even know that's there. Oh, what did I think of that before? 
I think that's what I'm going to go with. And this end will get tucked under. So there we go. I'm put, going to put that there most likely. Um, and then I trimmed her out because I didn't want the beach scene because we're doing artists. So I have her and I'm thinking maybe I'm going to butt her up against that. Now, of course, she can't have a beach ball. So I thought that what I could do instead is take this washi tape and put that washi tape there. And of course, I'm going to put it so that I hide the um, beach ball because I don't want it to look like it's a beach scene any longer. So there she is. She's a little bit crooked. So I'm just sort of doing a dry fit to get an idea of what I'd like to do. And then um, this is a, a paint set and this is one of Art by Marlene's watercolor set. So I thought it would be nice maybe if I just put uh, a brush there, like I'm in the process of working on it. And then I have this that says Art Supplies, which I can put there. And then I'm thinking that I want to make it like a collection of tools. So I have a pair of scissors here. I have a tall brush that I can use. Anything that's too long, I'm just going to trim afterwards. So there's my brush. I do want the scissors over it, I think. Um, and then I have another brush here, which I will use as well, because of course this is supposed to be a can with a whole bunch of art supplies in it, so why not um, depict it as that to begin with. Uh, and I've got a, the paint pen here, which I think I'll likely put there. So you can still see the brush. You can see the scissors and the paint pen. And then I've got a spatula here, which is another great tool that I'm going to put there. And then I've got some various crayons and one more little brush, I believe. Yep, one more little brush. So I'm going to put that little brush there as well. And then I will take this pencil. I have pencils and crayons and pastels and stuff. Um, and I think what I will do is I'm going to put them further up so you can actually see them somewhat, right? Because you want to be able to see them and sort of build like a little, a little scene of all the tools that I would be using. Um, and here's a crayon as well. So that's kind of nice and colorful. And then um, I have this thing of paint here. And I thought maybe that could anchor everything. So at the moment, yes, I know it's a little bit too up. I might bring it down a bit, or I might just ground that with um, a Stabilo wall afterwards. So that's the point I'm at right now. Um, and I'm looking at the background and thinking that I might um, do some stenciling. So I'm going to get out some stencils and continue. So I decided that I was not going to stencil, that instead I was going to stamp. So one of the stamps that I've taken out is this stamp BM48, which is called Mandala Tapestry. So I've taken it out of its package. I've got one set on a block and I'm going to use Instead of black, I'm going to go with the stays on midnight blue. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this aside. And I have a sheet of paper here. And I always start by um, inking the stamp and sort of getting it, getting it working, for lack of a better way to say it. So here is the stamp. And I just want to see what happens. Push down to use the jiggling and up oh, we're good. Alright, so 
So now I'm going to put this back over that paper because I may have some overlap and I just don't want it to um, make a mess of anything else. So I am inking up the Stampin' In and I'm making loud noises but I'm actually not really pushing very hard at all. And I want one to be up at the top here. So I'm going to line it up, drop it there, and push. So that one is there. All right. So you won't see the complete of it, but you do get some of the texture that goes along with it. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to that look fine. And I think I'll put it one on the end here as well, this one. So there, there's one on the end. And I'll stamp it down. There. And I messed it up. That one turned out a bit better which is always the way, even if I practice first. So then I'm going to just put this back because I don't like stuff lying around. I like to be able to find my stuff. So I'm just going to put that back on there and on here. And the one other one that I thought I might use is some of the smaller ones, which... So the other one I thought I would use is the exclusive texture. So you'll see some of them are sort of tossed around there. And I want to have little bits of texture sort of all over the place. So I think I'm going to start with this one. Now you don't have to put it on a block. The only reason I put it on a block is because uh, my one wrist doesn't work at all right now. So I need to have something a little more stable so and of course I have that paper underneath again so that I'm not going to make a mess and I'll just kind of you know touch it here and there and give it some marks make it look like it's just part of it so see I've got that texture so that looks kind of good um, and then what I'll do is I'll just clean it off here okay that's what I normally do with my stamps. And then um, I've always liked the writing one. So I think I'll do a little bit of the writing. So here is the writing one. And uh, whoops, mm -hmm. it's slippery. And I'm going to ink it up. And then I think maybe have some around some different random random spots so maybe over here as well I don't know what's going to end up being um, where because I prefer to do it before I stick that all back together so there's some squiggly writing that I've done again I will clean it off on there and put it aside and I think I will um, Oh, here we are. These little guys are quite cute. Uh, so I think I'll tap some around as well. Now, a lot of this you may not see at all, but um, you may see it. So it just gives it a little bit more dimension and a little bit more interest. It'll poke out the things that I'm working on. So there we go, let's do that, and maybe that over there, and a tidge over here. And that, that'll give it more um, texture. So there, I've cleaned that one off as well. I will take this, and I will put it away so I don't end up with blue inky fingers. I'll put that off to the side. And I don't know if I did show you, but I'll show you again. So this is the texture stamp that I was using and it's BM 47 love this stamp now I will um, now put paper
take this dirty sheet away. That's why I keep them there so then I don't have to worry about it. And I'm going to do a, a dry fit one more time to see what it all looks like. So now this is going to be here. I'd say like that is a good spot. And then I'll take her and I'm going to put her there like that. I don't want her to be all tipsy though. And here is the washi tape that we're going to use. Whoops. <laughs> Bit higgledy-piggledy when I do stuff. And the paintbrush. This is still going to look pretty good here. Yeah, so some, somewhere like that. Probably not. And then I will have all these. Well, I have the art supply words right here. And then I'm going to have all the brushes and everything here. Along with, I think I'm going to use this color wheel as well as the paint along the bottom. So I have all these guys that have to go on as well. Um, I am going to glue them on with a very worn out Nouveau glue. Um, it's a very good glue and everything will hold. And because I'm bending the, the paper around the tin, I really, really want it to be a bit of a stronger bond than I would be able to get, say, if I used a glue stick. So I'm just going to glue all that down and then I can continue. So now I have it all sorted out um, and I just have this last little piece to uh, glue down for here, which is the color wheel. And that kind of will uh, tie it all in together. And then, of course, anything that is um, below, I will trim off as it's going to interfere. Now it's time to do some additional decorating and embellishing. So, I have gel pens. And I have glitter pens, and I have those uh, Caran d'Ache fluorescents. So this is normally what I bling it all up with. And I'll probably take a black marker and go around all the edges of everything so that it grounds it a little bit more. Uh, but I'll wait to do that just a little bit because the glue still has to dry. So I'm going to do that. So let's see, I want things to, you know, sort of be sparkly and fun. So for sure, this heart here needs to be pinky blingy. <laughs> Don't you love my terminology? Pinky blingy. So that's become pinky blingy. And I'm going to do these hearts here as well. So I'll do those. So they stand out a little bit more and they're a little bit more fun and oh there's still a heart here and a heart here lots of hearts because there's lots of love for paint supplies and art supplies i don't know what i ever did before they arrived in my life but uh, it's very nice that they're here now so there we go so i did the little hearts like that um let's see what else i'm going to do i think that i would like these polka dots to be sort of fun so i'm going to just take this and i'm going to make some more neon because that'll always make them pop won't it and i do love neon um this particular color I can wear but I really love limes and I must say they don't look so great on me so I've grinned and bared it and realized that yep limes just don't suit me so I'm also going to give these polka dots here some color so that's what I'm doing with that so that they stand out a little bit more um, and her lips. 
her lips should be a little bit on the painted up side so they show a bit more so not a lot but a bit so there she's got more glammy lips um and the book here it would be nice if that had a color to it and doesn't necessarily have to be matchy matchy i think maybe we might do this green here because that will be nice and glimmery and stand out. And now under the light, it might be somewhat hard to see, but we'll see. I know it's there. You saw me put it there. So is it going to be visual on camera? Hmm, not sure, but it's all good. And then I'm going to accentuate um, the white that's here so that it stands out a little bit more. Pops a little bit more. So that's some that. And I think I will do the same on this. roll of washi tape. So we'll just give it a little more definition. Um, and maybe on these bushes here so they stand out more visually in her hair. And I think that where's that paintbrush? Oh, see, I did not think the share had the part on it that I missed. There we go. And then this is kind of like a yellowish gold. Now, I'm just going to turn it a little bit because of how I work. So I'm hoping you can still um, see it. I want to give this a little bit of extra so it stands out a little bit more. So that'll make that stand out a tiny bit more. And then we have this part here, which I think maybe I can just put in here a little bit. I just want to just give it a little bit more ink. And it doesn't have to be completely covered. Um, there's so many decisions, my goodness. I think I'm going to make this paintbrush over here a little bit better as well. So I'll give it a bit of the yellow, which sort of is showing. And I think for the scissors, I'm going in with the caramel. So again, I'm turning it because that's easier for me to work that way. And I am going to pop a bit here. Here's why I'm doing that. Just a little bit of color. And I'll bring in the orange as well. Now that really pops, doesn't it? Orange supply. One of my favorite things. So might as well be able to notice them, right? And I think I will put a little bit of the yellow in here to make that stand out more. And I will take the white. And I'm going to take white there and then some black as well. I'll make it stand out a little bit more. And this little highlight here will make it stand out. And makes them pop just that little bit more. I might do the same with this here, just to make it look a little bit better. Um, and other than that, I think that's about it for some of the popping. Um, I might take some colored pencils and enhance with colored pencils, so I'll just give those out. 
Okay, so I dug out some colored pencils, which I am using the Jane Davenport ones, mainly because the most of the colors I have here will work well with the die cuts. So I'm just going to open up the tin, and there they all are. And I am going to start with the color watercolors of Marlene because they are very very bright and they're not looking so bright right now so of course here I go I need to turn a bit and fluff it up a bit or brighten it up a bit there we go I brightened up those yellows with some It's not, it's not a full red, but um, I push too hard and bang that up. Why did I do that? Well, and then um, let's see, I have an orange, which Interestingly enough, in this set, they don't seem to have an orange, so I might have to get another one out and check. But I can do the zest, no problem. I can't stand out more. And this is... This is going to be too dark for my eyes. I'm just going to test it on something first. Oh no, not too bad. So it, although it's not 100% red color, you kind of brighten it up a little bit. And that's really kind of what you wanted it to do. There we go. There's a bit brighter now. And let's see what others do I have. Oh, I have that more pinky pink, which this one should probably suit for. Push that one out of the way. This one. bit and this one um, black I'll do one more black and yellow which will make it a bit darker says bear, which is kind of a bit darker than um, what I have, but at least yeah, you won't get that bad of it and it won't hurt it because it's still kind of like bare skin color. Um, and the last one I think maybe should be in this family. Now the one that I was not able to do was the orange. So let me see. Whoops. Yeah, I grabbed an orange from another uh, another set.
well put that up a little bit. All right, now let's put that a little bit more exciting, I think. Maybe with the pink. a little bit. Mm -hmm. I think I want to bring it up just maybe a little bit more. And I think maybe I should do something more fun. Excuse me. Uh, you probably won't be able to see what I'm doing, but it's okay. You know what I'm doing. Okay. So there, I got your glasses a little bit. And then I'm going to pick up a bit of the yellows in our, in our hair. Just so that stands a little bit more. A bit more fun. Should be able to do that with these brown. That's a reddish brown, but I just want to go with it being a brown. And then we'll make it more colorful. Um, and then I think this color wheel, I'm going to pick up some of the colors in the color wheel. That's all right. I don't need to get crazy about it. So that gave it a little bit more color. Now I'm going to take 
the black marker and I am going to go around everything. Um, I don't want too big a line. I think I'll go with like a um, classic, but like a pink blue. Then I will start to do that. Which for sure I would like that rounded. I'll enhance her hair a little here. I don't quite follow the lines because I don't want it to look nearly so contrived. So I tend to just wiggly, wiggly, give her a bit more curl. Less tame, more wild. That's all good. This gives her a little bit more oomph. Um, I don't really see where I want to do too well here. Can I make that stand out? No. So let's see. And then I'll outline this. So that does ground it quite a bit more. Um, I think I have to do it around here as well. So we'll know about that. Keep working on that. Okay, so I finished going all around with the black outline. And now what I need to do is I need to cut this so it's going to fit on the can. So I'm just going to trim this off so there's no interference. As well as this. And this. Okay, so I'm going to put those aside. So there you have it. That won't matter because it's going to be glued down. So I'm going to take the can now and I'm going to place the label on the can and I'm going to roll it around. It will be stiff because there's all those die cuts on it. And I will roll it around to here. Well done. I only got a bunch of flame. So there, see how I've got it? I wrapped it around. 
So now what I'm going to do is I want some tape for here. And then afterwards, my one last thing is I'm going to put that there. This is um, from when I punched out all my scrap pieces with the Pentanella die um, that comes in Marlene's type kit. So I'm just going to grab the double-sided tape and then we can put this together. Okay, so I've got some double-sided tape. I'm going to lay this down. And I'm going to give, no matter what, both ends a pretty strong amount of the double-sided tape. Do the same on this side. should do it for that. Let's see now. I want to see which is which. So this was going over this. So I'm going to undo that side. Because it'll show somewhere. I'm just wondering if Maybe I'm going to err on the side of caution. I'm going to add some more tape. I'm going to add some here as well. Just so I don't get as much buckling and it'll probably hold it all together much better. So that's my story and I'm sticking to it. So there we go. So I've got that. Okay, double check again. Yes, this is the side. So first I'm going to peel this off. So I want that peeled off. And then I'm just going to take the can and I'm going to just put that right there to start. Okay, so now to peel off this. And I'll get this from this side just because it's easier. Carefully. And I'm going to carefully start running it around because I I do want it to head here, and I don't want it particularly to be crooked, which I think we're okay so far. No. I got that there. Of course, that, it doesn't want to stick to the metal quite that well, but it will once I put this other one down. So I'm just taking this other one off. So that I can do the same. And that works. That's the one thing with double sided tape. <laughs> Got to try and get one without the other. Okay, so that should be good. Now I'm just going to bring it around. And this is going to hang over it. both sides. So there we go. Now, not 100%, but you see this here is not staying like that. This is going over it. So that would just be a nice little added touch. Now it looks like it's a bit too wide. So what I'll do is take my scissors and I think I'll take a little bit off of this side. bit off on this side. And that 
could be good, but I'm not interfering with anything else. And I'm not. So now, I think I should be good enough with just a glue stick. Because this is very, very, this is very, very thin. So I'm just going, I just grabbed that mat so I wouldn't make a mess everywhere. And uh, it made quite a gooey mess, <laughs> the glue stick and the punchinella. And I'm not going to worry. You see that rip there? It's not a big deal. It looks less contrived and more normal, shall we say. Okay, I'm going to move my sticky mess out of the way, and I'm going to bring my pin back over here. And I am going to try to not block anything, which I think I've now succeeded in doing. And I am going to do like that. door and it should hold together no problem so there you have it my little art supply tin which I'll put some art supplies in and I'll take another photo of so I hope you enjoyed that video I had lots of fun chatting with you and I look forward to our next visit together take care stay safe bye bye